Och vi tycker att vi har lyckats när en journalist kommer hit och tror den ska skriva om någonting. Och den kommer hem med en berättelse som är långt mycket mer än vad man hade tänkt sig innan man kom hit. Och som grädde på moset, det är också när de skriver om någon, om någon av er som sitter här i salen idag. Det är vårt främsta mål, att de dessutom ska lyfta våra partners. En av dessa för oss så eftertraktade och omtyckta journalister är här hos oss idag. Låla Akinmade Åkerström. Hon är en prisbelönt författare, fotograf och resejournalist. Hon är ägare av Geo Travel Media samt Slow Travel Stockholm. Och hon är här idag för att berätta för oss hur Stockholm uppfattas i internationell media. Välkommen upp på scen, Låla. introduction Eva and uh, I'm so happy to be with you all this afternoon. So today I'm going to be talking about how Stockholm is perceived, how we travel writers and travel bloggers see and perceive the cities we visit and why it's important for brands to keep inviting us in and working with us. And so I'm going to start with a personal story. Ströme. <laughs> Ströme in no? Yeah, but <laughs> the first time I went on the Stroma brunch cruise, I had an epiphany. And it wasn't because I was eating gravat lax or seal or, you know, the buffet there. And it wasn't just because I was relaxing and enjoying the view. It was because that one single experience of cruising seemed to be capturing multiple experiences for me. Multiple experiences that were capturing the feeling, the feeling of being in Stockholm, and I'll explain. For example, I mean, you guys know Stockholm is absolutely beautiful, viewed from the water, right? As you're kind of cruising slowly by, absolutely beautiful city. As you're cruising by, you see some of the city's 14 islands, you know, like you got in Gamla Stan, Sodermam, as you cruise by. Yeah, also digging into Swedish food. Again, gravat lax, you know, seal, shagula, all that good stuff. <laughs> you know, you, you, you get the feeling of sailing through the archipelago, and you're taking in the screams coming from Grönland as people are screaming on the roller coasters. And you just get that kind of general relaxed feeling, lifestyle. And as I was going through, this first time I was on the cruise, I was thinking, wow, so many experiences in one, in one single experience, that this will be perfect for a traveler with very, maybe just two days in Stockholm, because it captures so much in just three hours, right? So, the next time I went on a brunch cruise, I brought 70 people with me. <laughs> 70. <laughs> Friends and families that flew in for my wedding, and since then, every year, this was in 2009, and since then, every year I've taken that same brunch cruise. And I've also written about it for many publications. Every single time I talk about Stockholm, things to do, what to, what to do, I always mention that brunch cruise because it captures so many experiences in just a single activity. Now, just go back. Now, now Stroman knows they already have a quality product. You know, they've got lots of people that enjoy it. But what they didn't anticipate was how deeply I, as a travel writer, was going to connect with that product over like a regular traveler. They didn't anticipate that. And that's going to be the point of my presentation today, perception. So I'm going to paint a picture for you all. I want you to think of Stockholm as an art gallery, right? And in this art gallery, that's filled with beautiful paintings and amazing sculptures, Every single brand is an artist in that gallery, right? So we've got, you know, restaurants and hotels and so companies, every single one represents an artist in that gallery. Now, an artist has a vision, right, of what they want people to see in their artwork. They spend months, maybe years even, 
painting and building this, and they want people to see it one way, because that's how the artist sees it. But most of the time, people may see something completely different than what the artist is trying to communicate. And I'm gonna get back to this as well. But I'm gonna show you this painting. You guys know this painting? Yeah. It's one of the most iconic paintings in the world, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. Now, Van Gogh probably didn't call himself a genius, right? He just probably looked out the window and said, oh cool, stars in the sky, let me paint it. That's what most artists do. Like, oh that's cool, let me do this, let me paint that. But what do we, as people who love art, do when we see this? Oh my God, the swirls, they represent the turmoil in his soul and the, and, and the shiny stars, oh my God, the hope. The, the artist never sees that in their own work. They just say, oh, it's cool, let me paint this. But we, the art lovers, are the ones that start ascribing value to the artwork, right? Are you all with me? All right. And the artist never calls himself a genius. It's the art lovers and the buyers who are the ones that call the artist genius. And so over time, what happens is, when an art lover connects with a painting, they tell another art lover, who tells somebody else, and then over time, an artist who is relatively unknown, over time, starts becoming a genius because they start ascribing value to the artist's work. And so I'm gonna take you back to Stockholm as an art gallery. The art buyers and art lovers. These are the travel writers and the bloggers and the journalists who are interested in your brand, all right? And so, most galleries, what they do is they have open houses, right? Because they wanna showcase the work of the artists. They have exhibitions, they invite them in to come check out the art in the gallery because they want to showcase the brand, which is the artist. And remember, in the beginning I said the artist represents you know, the travel brands, the hotels and the restaurants. Like art exhibitions, it's extremely important to keep inviting writers and journalists and bloggers in because you never know who is gonna connect with your brand on a deeper level. Now, every good gallery has what we call a curator, right? And the curator is someone who lays out the gallery, who says, oh, this artist complements this artist, so we'll group, group them together, these brands work well together, let's group them together. And what the curator does is, they increase the probability that an art buyer will connect with a certain type of artwork. And so, for example, thinking of Stockholm as an art gallery, Visit Stockholm is that curator because they know all the brands, they know which ones work well together, and they group them. So that me, as an art lover, or as a journalist who is interested in fashion, it increases my probability of connecting with the right brands. And so what I've got down here is, the role of the curator is crucial because they are increasing the probability that the right ad buyer will connect with the artist. Have I lost you guys or you're still kind of, you follow me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, now I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna flip the coin a bit now. What if you, as an artist, as a brand, you're always being perceived one way, which you feel is not the full picture, but you want people to start perceiving you another way, right? So take a look at this picture. When I, when I take a look at this picture, the last thing that comes to mind is baby friendly, right? Or family friendly. Because I can see my child jumping on that display and bringing the whole thing down. Like it doesn't look like it's something for kids to kind of be running around in, right? But this picture is from one of the most family friendly luxury brands in the world, Four Seasons. And what they've done is, because they have always been perceived as, well, it's for rich old people, you know, it's this luxury brand. They actually created a blog. They were proactive, saying, look, 
this perception, we are tired of it, this is not the real story, this is not the full story. And so they created a blog and started inviting writers and bloggers and journalists with their families to come experience their properties, come experience the family-friendly amenities and to start writing about it for their blog. So over time, they were able to start changing that perception that, oh, this is the only audience we, come, we cater to. And so what they did was by, <clears throat> by bringing the journalists and the writers with their families, they were able to say, not only reach a new type of audience, but also start to change the narrative, change the perception, all right? So, so what I did was I was going to talk to other people, other writers and journalists to ask them, okay, what do you guys think about Stockholm? How do you perceive Stockholm? And most of them actually weren't that helpful because the information they were giving me was, oh, we love Stockholm, that was, that was wonderful, oh, you have to try this restaurant, da, 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 da. But what I wanted to get from them was, was there an experience in Stockholm that changed the way you, you saw the city or made the city come alive in a different light? And I was able to actually get two good answers from, for that. Because most of them was like, oh, you have to go try Matthias Dalgro, you have to do this, or stay at the river, all that. You know, they were giving me all that. So, the first one was from Henry. Henry Lee is a travel blogger, and he says, Ah, Skooks Sheko Garden, how easy it will be for anybody to miss this. I admit, I wanted to see where Greta Gabo was buried, and that was the reason why he went there. But what he did not expect was just how tranquil the place was. That it was expecting to just go to a cemetery, right? But for those of you who've been there, it's a lot more than a cemetery. It's almost like a meditative, kind of spiritual place. And so that was what he discovered when he went there, so that when he got back, he was able to recommend the place to his audience who are interested in spiritual, meditative travel, right? So are you guys kind of following me? So he went there for one reason, which was to go visit Greta Gabo's grave, but came back with something else that he was able to recommend to a different group of people. And then, this is another quote from him. He said, I spend the day on the Vaxholms while I get ferry to and from Vaxholm. I vastly underestimated how peaceful and beautiful the islands in the archipelago are. Emotionally and psychologically, I understood a little better why Stockholm residents, which is all of us here, head out there in the summer. They go out there to play and to relax. Now, there's something about cruising around Stockholm that just makes you start thinking and having epiphanies. But what he was trying to say here was, now we understood why Swedes get out into the islands during the summer. Because it's just peaceful and tranquil out there, right? Another blogger, she says, I've heard about the numerous art installations in the subway. Now, everybody knows the subway is the largest art exhibition in the world, the longest in the world. Most people know that, but what she really liked, that really impressed her, was that a lot of the artists whose work are exhibited in the subway, Tunnel Banner, are pretty young. And now, to her, she said, the fact that there are young artists being highlighted on such a grand scale speaks a lot about the city. That it's not a city where you have to almost follow steps to get somewhere. It's a city where if you're good enough, if you're creative, if you love what you do, you can, you can start playing on the largest stage, you know, right away. You don't have to go through certain steps. And so that was, that was a point there. This one she also sent directly to visit Stockholm. She said, before coming to Stockholm, I already expected that Stockholm Tourism Board will be very useful and helpful. But when I arrived, I was even more positively surprised to see how professional they are and how serious they are about what they're doing. I really want to commend that, and I think they're one of the great examples to other tourism boards in Europe. So I want to say, 
great job if you sit down. <laughs> Now, we all have the potential to be Van Gogh's, all our brands, to, over time, get people ascribing value to what we do. Because you as the artist, as the brand, you really can't call yourself a genius. It's people that love what you do, that love what you offer, that start calling you that. And for us to have that potential, we need to open up, right? We need to be willing to be vulnerable. To, to be willing to have people perceive our brands differently than the way we want to project our image. Because you never know who's going to connect with your brand. And we need to let more people in. You know, the ad lovers, the ad buyers, who are the writers, the travel writers, the bloggers, the photographers, to come in to see our work and to connect with our work. So, just like I gave you in the beginning the example of Strama, they probably didn't anticipate that the next time I was going to go, I was going to go with 70 people. So that's just what I want to say is, as brands, we need to be able to open up and work with... <laughs> um, as brands, we need to be able to open up and be willing to work with journalists and writers and bloggers. And let's see. Oh, that was it. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you guys. So come on.